Hello everyone, welcome to Paymon Tech Medio. In this video, we will talk about storage pool. So previous videos, we talked about RAID and now what is a storage pool? For this video demonstration, I'm using Hyper-V Manager. As we can see, virtual machine already created, Server 2019 operating system already installed. And this is our server 2019 virtual machine, which I did already add three virtual hard disks in order to go over a storage pool. Let me show you how. So in Hyper-V Manager, simply right click, the virtual machine settings and then under SCSI controller added these three hard drives and created VHDs and attached the VHDs. For example, if you want to add another hard drive, simply highlighting the SCSI controller and then hard drive add. So another hard drive added and then attaching the VHD by just simply clicking on the new, making sure the hard drive is highlighted where it says file, new and then next, next, next. And then where we want to store it, what do we want to call it? Let's say VHD4, next, let's say 100 gig. Next and finish. And then we should have our VHD already attached. But for this video, I'm using VHD1, VHD2, VHD3 and the original virtual hard disk where the operating system is installed, it's connected to ID controller 0. I'm going to go ahead and click cancel and let's minimize our Hyper-V manager. Go into our virtual server. Let's go full screen, view, full screen mode or by pressing control break on a Hyper-V. Okay, so here we can see if I right click start menu and then disk management, I should be able to see. Let's maximize the window. So the original VHD, disk zero, disk one, disk two, and disk three, the new three VHDs that added. As we can see, unallocated, no partitions. Let's close disk management. And for a storage pool, we have to open server manager. Click start, server manager. And then we need to click on file and storage services and then click on storage pools. Currently we don't have any storage pool created. The differences between storage pool and RAID, it's basically that storage pool gives us a lot more flexibility. We can implement different type of RAID configurations and then we can add or remove hard drives, create virtual hard drives, create volumes, extend the amount of hard drives, be able to add, remove hard drives. Basically, we have a lot more flexibilities. Let me show you how. First, we want to create new storage pool. We can just simply right click new storage pool or here we can click task new storage pool. Let's click next. Let's call it storage pool one. Next. And here, these are the three hard drives available that we can use for this storage pool. Let's add all of them. Next and create. We can click close. So here this is our storage pool. So by selecting storage pool, we can see all the physical disks. We can also add additional hard disk. If we have any additional hard disk available, we can remove disk by simply right click remove. Now let's create a virtual disk. So selecting our storage pool in the virtual disk where it says task, we can click task, new virtual disk, selecting our storage pool. Okay. And let's create the virtual disk. Next, we can say storage pool one, virtual disk one. Next, next. And here we have the option to create simple, mirrored, or parity. Which simple here, as we can see in the description section, data is striped across physical disk, maximizing capacity and increasing throughput, but decreasing reliability. This storage layout records at least one disk and does not protect you from a disk failure. Mirror, data is described across physical disks, creating two or three copies of your data. This increases reliability, but reduces capacity. To protect against any single disk failure, use at least two disks. Three, if you're using a cluster. To protect against two disk failure, use at least five disks. And then parity, data and the parity information are striped across physical disks. 
increasing reliability, but somewhat reducing capacity and performance. To protect against a single disk failure, use at least three disks. To protect against two disk failures, use at least seven disks. So we can just select, let's say if this is mirrored, next. And then for the provisioning type, we have thin or fixed. Thin, it says the volume uses a space from the storage pool as needed, up to the volume size. And then fixed, the volume uses a space from the storage pool equal to the volume size. This is kind of similar to where we had dynamically allocated or dynamically expanding comparing to the fixed size anytime when we wanted to create a virtual hard disk. So we can say, go ahead, create this virtual disk using this physical disks, but using thin provisioning type. So when the data moves to the virtual disks, then it will take space from this physical disks. Thin selected. Next, amount of gigabyte, let's say 50 gigabyte. Next, and create. This will create the virtual disk. Then, as soon as we click close, it will give us the option to create a volume on this virtual disk. So let's create the volume. Next. And we will use the entire size of the virtual disk. Next. E drive, file system, name of the volume. We can say this is volume one on virtual disk one on storage pool one. For example, next and create. And then close. So this is our E drive. So if we open this PC, this is our E drive. Now if we use disk management, right click start. Disk management. Let's maximize the window. So this is our E drive. So previously we saw all those VHDs in the disk management, but right now in server manager creating storage pool, storage pool is utilizing it. So here in disk management, we can only see the volume that we created of the storage pool. Let's close disk management. And let's close the file explorer window. So here, this is how we can create a storage pool. First, we must have a physical hard drives available, going to the server manager, and then clicking on file and storage services, and then click on the storage pool. Then we should be able to see by clicking task, new storage pool, and then selecting the available physical disks. And then from that, we can create a virtual disk and then create a volume on those virtual disks. So for example, if we want to expand virtual disk, we have the option. If we want to detach, delete, so we have a lot more options. Let's detach and delete. And of course, we'll lose all the data. So before we delete any volume, we want to back up our data. This is brand new volume. We don't have any data on it, so no problem. Let's delete. And then we can delete our storage pool. Okay, now let's go ahead and create another. Now here under available, we should be able to see all this available again. Now let's create another storage pool. We can right click on available disks, new storage pool. Next, let's say storage pool one. Next, and only selecting the first disk. Next and create. close. So here under available disk, we, we see two disks available. This is our storage pool, only one disk here. So again, at any time we can add physical disk and select from the computer. And usually we see storage pool on a cloud computing or data centers where the clients asking for storage, expanding capacity or making some updates and changes. So this is where the flexibility comes into play when we compare it to the RAID. So if we want to create another storage pool, we can again click task, new storage pool. Next, let's say storage pool two. Next, and adding all the hard drives available. Next, and create. And then close. So on storage pool one, we have only one disk. On a storage pool two, we have two disks. 
and again at any time we can add more hard drives to the computer and then going to the server manager going to the file and storage services storage pool and then add them here to the storage pools so on storage pool one here we can see if I click task new virtual disk from storage pool one okay next storage pool one virtual disk one next so we had only one disk here we have the option enclosure awareness it stores the copies of your data on a separate storage enclosure just bunch of disk helping protect your data if an entire enclosure fails we have that option we can click next and here we have the options create simple mirror or parity so again this is only one disk on a storage pool one so mirror is not going to really work because we need at least two physical disks. So if I click next, we get this error because we have only one disk available in storage pool one. So the only option is pretty much simple. So let's highlight simple and click next. Let's select thin. Next. Let's say 50 gig. Next and create. Close. And then create the volume on this virtual disk. Next. Use the entire size. NTFS file system provides encryption and compression. REFS for the larger partition size. Next and create. And then close. Okay, so on storage pool one, we have only one disk and we created our virtual disk and we created our volume. On storage pool two, we have two physical disks we didn't create any virtual disks yet. Let's create a virtual disk. Storage pool 2. Next. Let's call it storage pool 2. Virtual disk 1. Next. And we do have the option for the mirror. It should work because minimum of 2 hard drives. Let's say 10 gig. Create. and close and create the volume on that virtual disk we'll use the entire size the 10 gig and then close on storage pool 2 let's create more virtual disks storage pool 2 virtual disk 2 let's say another 20 gig for example and create after creating the virtual disk we have to create a volume now let's create the volume NTFS selected we can say this is storage pool to virtual disk to volume and then next and create and then close okay so right now if I click start this PC here I should be able to see all the new volumes and so on so again using storage pool at any time we can add hard drives create virtual disks create volumes creating more storage pool, adding more hard drives to the storage pool. Let's say we can have one storage pool for accounting, let's say for the marketing, sales department, and then adding the hard drives, and then creating virtual disks. And then from here, we can, let's say, right click properties, go into the sharing tab, advanced sharing, enable the share, permissions, allow the department, adding the groups, and then, um, that specific group or department should be able to access. So with the storage pool, we have a lot more option when comparing to RAID. This is an example of how we can set up storage pool on server 2019. If you have any question, please write it in the comment section. Hope this video was helpful. If you want to see more tech videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. Thanks again and have a good day.